Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. How's everybody doing? Yes. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Amen. Amen. So like Pastor Marcus said, I got a call Friday and he put me completely out of my comfort zone. Like (laughs) he said, hey, I'm going to need you. And I know what he was building up to. He said, "Uh, are you ready to preach Sunday? And I'm like, nope. Because for me, I'm going to be honest, can I be honest with you? For me, it takes me about a week to prepare for a message. I, I kid you not. Like, it takes me, and I'm working on it all week. So I'm like, no, sir, I'm not ready to preach. And then Friday, he's like, brother, you're, you're on for Sunday. I'm like, so anyways, the pressure was on. So it's been a long week. I'm on like two and a half, two and a half hours of sleep from last night. And, uh, but we're going to get through this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So here we go. So like Pastor Marcus said, we are in a, we are in a new series, Win the Day. So we're going to start off. So we're starting off 2021 with this new series, right? Um, win the day. Somebody say win the day. Win the day. Amen. I love this phrase because it's a simple daily reminder, but it's also a powerful, it, it, it's a powerful, it's a simple daily reminder, but also a powerful reminder to stay on guard, right? And to stay focused. In my six years of walking with Christ, this is still something that I apply daily, right? It's like a mental daily check. Part of my daily routine, I make sure I leave the house with an attitude, win the day, right? I make sure when I wake up, I get in my prayer. I make sure that I get in my devotion. And I make sure when I get in my truck, it's win the day, right? Because I know I'm going out to the, to the world, right? So it's, it's my daily reminder. To me, winning the day is staying on course, staying on the narrow road that we as Christ followers are called to walk on. Not just playing the part, but actually living it, right? Today in this world, right, just sat alone, is an accomplishment. Just for you to go out and to win the day the way this world is, that's an accomplishment in itself, right? Winning the day for me is sharing the gospel and my faith with others. Winning the day for me is loving God and serving him and his children joyfully without it being a hindrance or a burden. And when it becomes that, I'm able to readjust. Winning the day for me is not allowing the enemy or the troubles of this world to steal my joy. Winning the day for me is, constantly, is, is to constantly keep a heavenly mindset. It's constantly setting my thoughts on the things above and not the things of this world. Winning the, day, winning the day for me is being content with who I am and where I'm at in my walk with Christ. Always, trying to stri- always striving for a deeper connection with him, but also, trying, uh, also not trying to rush the, the, the process of the season I'm in, right? So when Pastor Marcus sent me this series title, it immediately takes me back to the beginning of my walk with Christ, to the early days of my faith. These words have helped me so much early on to stay the course and to help assist me in overcoming a drug addiction. Like I said, it's simple, but it's a very powerful tool. And for me, it's just an encouragement I still need to remind myself daily to do what is right. So as I was preparing yesterday for today's message, I started reflecting on my walk and how I first uh, came to know Christ. And it was a very unique, interesting way on how the Lord got my attention. But one, yeah. Hold on, I'm sorry, you have to bear with me. And I know it was a unique and interesting way on how the Lord got my attention, but I know one thing for a fact is that he is everywhere and he sees it all, right? But nevertheless, he got my attention and my whole, he, he got my attention and my whole world as I knew it was completely turned around. And I realized nothing I was doing in my life was acceptable nor pleasing to God. So like I said, he came knocking and I answered the call and he rocked my world, right? It was painful, but yet pleasing at the same time, if that makes any sense. There is no beating around the bush with God. He gets straight to the point and goes straight to the source of it. He pulled the rug out from under my feet, right? I'm like, whoa, God, slow it down. Slow it down a little bit, right? Give me some time to take this, to take this all in. And I kid you not, he was moving like a freight train in our lives. Right, Ben? It was all new to us. We didn't know what to expect. He hit us like he hit us and it was crazy. Within two or three weeks of accepting Christ, I'm seeing things in my life and in the world completely different. My eyes were, were now wide open, right? He was speaking and I was listening. And he started cleaning up from the inside out. Next thing you know, I'm opening up about a meth addiction that I was battling with. Because he was showing me that it needed to come out so that I could be set free of it. 
That's actually how he got my attention. In 2015, I had a glass pipe in my hand smoking meth. I wasn't even looking for him, right? I wasn't even looking for him. But for some reason, he was interested in me. He was interested in me. <sighs> Woo. And that day, oh, God, woo. that was a day that God transformed my life. I was living in such a dark area, right? I didn't even put this in there, but I remember holding a gun to my head multiple times, squeezing the trigger, putting a, a gun to my wife's head, putting her on the ground, and holding a gun to her head multiple times. And nobody saw that. We didn't, we didn't share that with nobody. Right, babe? But the Lord came through. And he saw something in us. Amen? Amen. <sighs> the next week I'm finding myself. That was the first week, right? That was the first. I come to Christ and he's moving. He's moving. We didn't know what to expect, man. Like, he, he hit us. I didn't know anything. I, we didn't know God. She, my wife did. She was coming to church. I'm going to freestyle a little bit here. Here we go. I'm going to freestyle. All right. So we, we weren't coming to church, right? And, and my, uh, my wife was coming to church. I wasn't coming to church. She begged me to come to church. Every Sunday she'd wake up. Come on, let's go to church. She was coming faithfully for like three years. She would beg me to come to church. She'd wake up, and I'd have six or seven homeboys in my kitchen with dope on the table and, and guns sitting beside the table and all of us smoking meth. And she'd wake up, her and the kids would wake up to a, to a cloud of smoke in our home for years, right? So God took us by storm and for some reason I was in that glass, that meth pipe and he showed up and he gave me this vision and I didn't even put this in here neither, but the vision was that I'd be preaching and I had no idea what preaching was. And he said, be ready because I'm taking you somewhere if you listen to me. And I said, okay. And slowly, I've seen it unfold, right? So I quit doing meth. We come over here, and Natalie said, hey, you need to stop. Natalie anoints my feet with oil, and the Lord, like, did something from that moment. I go home, and I'm like, I got to stop selling dope. I stopped selling dope, we, we, right? Then the Lord puts it in my heart to, to resign from my job. At that moment in time, that was the best paying job I had ever had, right? This was like 2013. I'm making like 20 something bucks an hour and I'm, I'm company truck and, but it was a toxic environment. I was selling dope to my boss at work. So the Lord said, you got to get out of that place. If you want to, if you want to move, you got to get out. And I said, okay. And I'm sending an email and I, res I resigned from that. I don't know why I'm so emotional. Boy, woo. Okay, every way, Lord. I accept it. Come on. So anyways, um, I resigned from my job. I sent an email. And as soon as I sent the email, I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the dope's gone. That money's gone. <laughs> so I had no backup plan. There was no backup plan. I didn't have another job waiting for me. I just know the Lord said, stop doing this. Quit this. And I'm like, okay. You know, and, 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 and I was just going off his promise. I was going off his word. That's what I did, right? I didn't, I didn't question it. He had a plan. I, did, I just didn't know what it was, but I, I was willing to go with it because I, 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 I liked that, that light that he put in me. He put something in me that day, and, and it felt so good that I just wanted to be around that light, right? Then that same week or the, ne this, that same week or the next, my wife and I decided to move back to my parents' house. Mind you, we, we've, been at, we've been living on our own since we were 18, right? And, and, and my parents are begging us to come home because I, I, I was my house. I was seeing so much demonic stuff. I shot in my house like four different times in three years at things that were tormenting my family and I. You know, we saw shadows running back and forth. My wife was touched. We used to see a big black mass. Like it, the enemy was in our home because of what I carried inside of our home. All right. So, so the Lord said, you know, we prayed about it and, and we're like, you know what? Let's leave our house. We packed up and we left. I couldn't even go home to pack my house because I was so afraid to walk in there. But my mom, my dad showed up with my wife and I stayed at my parents' house and they pulled everything out and they moved everything in one day. 
And my mom said, you're back home with us. <laughs> and we stayed there for three years. And the Lord worked on me. Right? I didn't know what I was doing. Right? I didn't know what I was doing. But I said, whatever it takes, Lord. Whatever it takes, let's go. I started all over. Whatever it takes, let's go. I'm ready. Right? I started all over. And I felt the power of God. And I felt his spirit moving inside of me. You know, we stayed on course, and I locked in here at the church, and Pastor Marcus and Natalie were so good to us that they still are, and we had so many mentors who just spoke life into us, and we stayed put, right? We stayed put. We stayed at my parents for three years and let the Lord work, on, let the Lord work and build our relationship and our marriage back up, and then slowly but surely, everything came back. The job came back, a better job making more money than I was making before with the Christian boss who talks about God all the time, right? The ministry started coming, and I'm like, this is awesome. You know, me and my wife's relationship came. It wasn't the easiest nor the most pleasing thing to do, right? But I let go of everything. Sometimes you just got to do it. Pull the Band-Aid off. Sometimes you got to pull it off, Right? The money, the drugs, the job, the sinful life that I chased, I no longer wanted it. I no longer found interest in it. But what I did see and what I do remember was all the damage I had done. After everything was said and done, the Lord showed me a picture of my wife. How she was completely worn out and broken. Right? And I, and I couldn't take that picture out. I'm like, man, this is the greatest woman that I've ever had in my life. Like, I don't even know why she's with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, she, she had multiple chances to leave me because of my, of my ways, right? I kept choosing this lifestyle and put her through. But she said, because the Lord showed me your heart. So I stayed with you. She said, because I know the good heart that you have. And I said, well, thank you, Lord, because I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have this woman to be our backbone, right? So after the hard parts were out the way, it was time to buckle down and to get to work, right? It was time to rebuild and to restructure. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't afraid of what the future held. I had constant discouragement, right? I was struggling with because everything happened so quickly, but the restoration took time. Everything was pulled from me quick, right? Within a few weeks, boom, 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 everything's gone. And then I'm just sitting there like, all right, Lord, restore me. I'm ready to go. He's like, no, 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 you're not ready to go. And that was the hardest part was waiting, was waiting, right? Was a waiting process. I was still new to my faith and I still had a bunch of questions. And that's when a good pastor friend of mine told me these three, those three words. He said, just win the day, brother. He said, whatever it takes, win the day. He said, trust God to do the rest. If he started to work in you, he'll see it through until the end. He said, stay faithful to him. So then God spoke clear as day. He says, stop worrying about what tomorrow holds and stop looking in the rearview mirror at the troubled past. He says, neither of the two will do anything for you other than steal your time and occupy occupy your mind on things that you have absolutely zero control over. He said, instead, use that energy to focus on me. Invest that time and attention towards me. So that's exactly what I did. I chose to win the day. That was my mentality. I kid you not. Every day I woke up, I'm winning the day, right? I'm at home with my parents, no job, but I'm going to win today, right? I have no more money in my bank account, but I'm going to win today, right? That's, that was my mentality. No matter what it looked like on the outside or no matter how I felt, I chose to win the day. I didn't care what anybody else said. I didn't care what my friends said. I didn't care what my family said. We didn't care. Yeah, we moved back home. Right? They saw the outwardness of it, but they didn't see the inwardness of it. They didn't see what God was doing on the inside. They see it now. You know what I'm saying? They see it now. I wasn't going to allow the enemy to steal my joy any longer. I had given him too many precious years that I'll never get back. And I started identifying myself as a new creation in Christ. And the Bible teaches us that the old life has passed away. Right? And it's on to new beginnings for us. I'm getting off track, guys, but we're going to get through this. Uh, all right, here we go. But that's my story, church. So what's your story, right? We all have a story, and we're all in different seasons of life. And one thing I'm certain of is that whatever season you're in, it's a teachable moment, right? 
Nothing is a waste. He is constantly teaching us, guiding us, and speaking to us. We are constantly growing. What's something that you're working on right now? Right? What is something God is speaking to you about? Maybe it's something you know you're going to have to let go of, or maybe it's something you're needing more of. Right? Right? What is it? We all have something. But I can assure you that we can all apply this to our everyday life. How can you win the day? How can you win the day? Maybe for some of you, it's going to require you letting go of something and opening up. Maybe it's, going to complete, maybe it's going to completely turn your life around like mine was. Right? It might not be resigning from your job and moving back to your parents for three years. But you know what's going to require? Some serious action. Right? It's going to require something serious. So let me encourage you this morning to not be afraid of it. Maybe for some of you, you just need to simply shut out the past. Right? The did yesterdays, the past hurts, the past mistakes, the past failures, right? You have to learn to let it go and let God move. Start off with, win this, with, with this win the day daily reminder, right? Maybe some of you just need to shut off the future, the unborn tomorrows that we tend to focus on. We give birth to them in our own mind even before they happen, right? I don't know. I'm like that at times too, constantly thinking about what tomorrow holds, all we do is think about it. The next thing you know, it's, ta- it's consuming our time. It's consuming the day, and the next day it doesn't even happen. So now I just consume three or four hours stressed on something that didn't even happen instead of just let- trusting in God and allowing him to do what he does, right? Jesus says in Matthew 6, 34, therefore do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We find throughout scripture daily is normal. And I believe it's to keep our faith in the Lord and him alone, being totally reliant on him as our provider, right? And not, and, and not just as a provider financially, but as a provider for every need. Do you remember the expiration date on the manna? Right? It was one day. God only provided them enough to feed their need just for that one day, right? How about the deadline on anger? It was sundown, Right? What are God's, when are God's mercies made new? Every morning. How often are we, are, are we to take up our crosses? Daily, right? And when, we, and, and when are we told to rejoice and be glad? Today. The 24, hours rule, the 24 hour rule where you look, the 24 hour rule is everywhere you look. In fact, it's, it's as old as day one in Genesis, right? There was evening and there was morning the first day. Pastor Marcus says, yesterday is, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and we all, and all we have is today. So let's make the very best of it and live it to the fullest, amen? amen. Miss Natalie says, when we get out of the way, our God shows up to win the day in a big way. I've come to learn that it's all about persistence and consistency if you want change. You have to put that work in, right? You have to put the work in. God's, God's not going to just do it for you without you doing your part, right? That's like me going to the gym and just laying on the bench press and expecting to get gains or something. It ain't going to happen, <laughs> right? Getting on the treadmill and not even, not even pushing start. <laughs> ain't going to happen. If you want Christ to rule your life, you have to put the work in. It's a two-way street. He'll never force you to do anything, right? He'll never force you to do anything that he knows you couldn't do. Sometimes it's just about stretching yourself. And sometimes he's just wanting you to grow and mature in your walk and your faith in him. Proverbs 8.34 puts it this way. It says, blessed is the man who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorpost. As we read this, there are three action words. Listen, watch, and wait. God wants us to listen, watch, and wait for him daily. So often we are so caught up in our own voices and the voices around us that we are not positioned to hear from him, right? We must have a mind and an ear tuned into him so that we're able to receive from him. It's a two-way relationship. So I ask you this morning, are you, are you listening to him? Are you in a position to hear from him? Right? Are you on, are you on the receiving end of it? Jeremiah 33, 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Then the second key word is watch. 
He says, watching daily at his gates, always staying on guard and ready for action. Right? He says, 2 John 1 8, 2 John 1 8 says, be on guard so that you do not lose all that we have diligently worked for, but receive a full reward. Anyone who wanders away and does not remain faithful to the teaching of Christ has no relationship with God, but to those who remain in the teaching of Christ have a wonderful relationship with both the Father and Son. Right? He's saying, stay on guard. Like the Bible teaches, we don't know the hour when Jesus is coming back. My dad says, you don't, want to get, you don't want to get caught with your pants down when he comes back, right? Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be doing his will? Is he taking you with him? Or are you going to get left behind? I don't want to get left behind. I want to be on guard, right? The third action step is waiting. He says to wait is to be, pre- to wait is to be patient while, while, while being ever vigilant with eagerness. Romans 8.25 says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Galatians 4.5 says, for through the spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. I like the way Matthew Henry says, it. he says, we are blessed to watch and wait at Wisdom Gate. Even our attendance there is our happiness. Just waiting, right? It is the best place we can be in. We are blessed, who, uh, we are blessed to wait there for we shall not be put to wait long. Let us continue to knock a while and it shall be open for us. We are seeking wisdom and we shall find what we seek. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 7, ask and the gift is yours. Seek and you'll discover. He says, knock and the door will be open for you. For every persistent one will get what he asked for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for. And everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. See, a lot of us knock and we don't get no answer or the answer doesn't come the way we want and we turn our back. It said, like Jesus says, persistently knock because I hear you, but I want to see how bad you want it. Keep knocking, I hear you, but I want to see, I want to see how, how bad you want it. Keep coming back for this daily bread. I just don't want to feel you one time and you go on your way and forget me. Keep seeking me. Keep searching for me. Keep knocking, right? Listen, church, I get it. It's a daily battle. It's a daily battle that we all struggle with. And I can tell you firsthand from experience that the hard work you put into it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Stay persistent with it and you'll eventually have results and reap its benefits. Sometimes not always in our time, but in his, but he's never late. He knows what we need and when we need it. Amen. The apostle Paul puts it this way. In Philippians 1, 6, he says, I am sure this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it into completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It's not over yet. The work's barely beginning, right? Keep the course, stay the race. Let me close with this. Jesus said it this way. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. All you have is today. All right. Paul said, today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your hearts like they did in days past. What if we began 2021 with something other than a revolution? Other, other than a revolution? All right. Let's make it a little easier. Here's your homework. Bury your yesterdays. Bury them. It's a new chapter this year, right? Bury it. Don't worry about your tomorrows. All that will take care of itself if you take care of today. Be present today. Love your wife today. Spend time with your kids today. Receive God's manna today. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He's the only one who can fill your every need. He's the only one who can fill that void. Nothing in this world can fill, nothing in this world can fill it. Whatever it is that you run back to, they ain't going to feel it. It's going to make you even more broken, more shame, right? Jesus is the only one who can feel that. And I've learned that the hard way time and time again. So let's win the day today, church. Not just today, but every day. Amen. Did y'all receive that? Amen. Let me pray for us. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. 
Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.